The Barbarians were formed in 1890 by a player from Blackheath, London, called William Percy Carpmail. At that time, the rugby season finished in March so he decided to invite a group of players to join him on an end-off-season tour to the north of England. This he saw as an opportunity to play with friends from various clubs who were normally opponents. It was such a success that he formed the Barbarian Football Club to continue touring on an informal basis, and the first tour took place in December of that year, playing Huddersfield and Bradford. The original ethos is still in place, with the Barbarians being a team which brings together players from different clubs to play a few matches each year to enjoy the camaraderie of the game and play attacking, adventurous rugby without the pressure of having to win. Carpmael's dream was to spread good fellowship amongst all players where all the things that are great about the game, flair, courage, spirit and passion, could be encapsulated in one team, who exist for the joy of the game and having fun. During their first team meeting of the week the president of the Barbarians Club, 92-year-old Mickey Steele Bodger, hands out pins and ties to the players, here he presents former all-black Dominic Bird with his with the players meeting up for the first time on the Monday before Saturday's game, it doesn't give them much time together to bond and work on tactics. New Zealand players Mitchell Drummond above left, George Bridge above right and Luke Whitelock try on shirts for size in the kit room at the team's base for the week, the Hilton on Park Lane. In a team meeting the Barbarian players, including Harold Forster above left and Mitchell Drummond above right, are asked to write down their desires and motivation for the week as well as a unique fact about themselves that no one else would know. For the New Zealand game, the Babas have named a 26-man squad, including six current or former All Blacks but there are no players from the home nations and only two from the Premiership Gloucesters Ruan Ackerman and London Irish's Ben Franks. A deal had been struck with the English top flight for access to players but with a recent glut of injuries, most clubs have been reluctant to release anyone. The Invitational Club are finding it harder to find players for their matches than ever before, because as the game has become more professional and more money has flowed into top flight rugby, clubs have been reluctant to release players for fear of them getting injured. Crusaders head coach Scott Razor Robertson from New Zealand, who this week is barbarian assistant coach to Robbie Deans, works out line-out drills with specially painted cubes, left. These drills are then carried out at the Barbarians Training Center at Latimer School in West London. They are put into practice by players such as Adrian Strauss from South Africa and Dominic Bird in the Stripes. The Barbarians are the gatekeepers of the soul of the game. They encapsulate everything that's good about the game. Robbie Dean, Barbarians coach ex England player and World Cup winner Will Greenwood, Wright, who is an assistant coach this week, shakes hands with New Zealand World Cup winner Ben Franks in the Latimer School Clubhouse. Greenwood has spoken out about the club's trouble selection problems, saying that it was disappointing that there were no England-based English players in the side as their club's DIDNT allowed them to be picked. The Difficulty this situation presence was demonstrated by the case of young New Zealander George Bridge who, up until he received a phone call last Saturday, hadn't been asked to play or was even aware of the match. Julian Saviafar, a World Cup winner with New Zealand, practices his basketball skills on a netball court with fellow winger Vince Esso. With it being nigh on eight years since the teams last met and the All Blacks being the current world champions, there is much media attention ahead of the match which the players are happy to be involved in. Gloucester's South African Ruan Ackerman performs his tri-celebration routine during a photo call and Julian Sevilla speaks to the press during a Barbarians media session. Once the serious business is over it's time for one of the overriding principles of the Barbarians, fun. There's time for one final team meeting to discuss tactics before the Barbarian players head out for a Halloween meal. Stephen Luatua is either waiting for a crime to be committed or the rest of his teammates in 6 feet 10. Dominic Bird has chosen an apt outfit as he attempts to cram himself into a black cab as the team head off to celebrate Halloween. With just one day to go before the match, the Barbarians again head to Latimer School for some last-minute practice. Hooker Acker van der Merwe from South Africa practices thrown-ins, above, whilst fly half Richie Munga, from New Zealand, who next week joins up with the All Blacks in France, practices his kicking and another New Zealander barbarian, and World Cup winner, Julian Sevilla works on his passing. 
Following their training session naturalist Steve Batchall turned up with a number of animals and reptiles for the players to be introduced to and handle, as part of a plan to help the players conquer their fears and spur them on against the world champions. Apart from Sevilla, who took one look at the animals and starpered. Amongst those who stayed to get acquainted with the animals were Ruan Ackerman, who got to know an albino Burmese python, South Africa's Quagga Smith, who looked quite taken with an eagle owl, and Captain Andy Ellis from New Zealand, who looked less impressed by a tarantula. Bakchal had an interested audience when he showed a caiman to a group of players. Victorious Barbarians scrum half Gareth Edwards is cheered off at the end of their 1973 match with All Blacks captain Ian Kirkpatrick far left at Cardiff Arms Park after the Barbarians defeated the All Blacks for the first time. Photograph color Sportrex shutter shock the teams have met 10 times over the years with their first meeting taking place at Cardiff Arms Park on the 20th of February 1954 where New Zealand set the tone for the subsequent meetings with a 195 victory. It WASNT until their fourth clash, in January 1973, that the Barbarians first tasted victory, with a 2,311 triumph in a fantastic match which some have rated as one of the greatest ever played. The sweet taste of victory was enhanced by the Bob Boss first try, scored by Gareth Edwards, which has since been labeled as some as the greatest try of all time and the match is rated as one of the greatest ever played Kirkpatrick to Williams. This is great stuff. Phil Bennett covering, chased by Alistair Scown, brilliant O, oh, that's brilliant John Williams, Brian Williams, Pullen, John Dawes, great dummy, to David, Tom David, the halfway line brilliant by Quinnell, this is Gareth Edwards a dramatic start, what a score O, oh, that fellow Edwards Cliff, Morgan, commentator the build up to that try, Gareth Edwards, second right, looks on as John Dawes passes to Tom David, Photograph color Sportrex shutter shock the game is one I will never forget and those of us who played in it will never be allowed to forget. It is a match that will live with me forever. People tend only to remember the first four minutes of the game because of the try, but what they forgot is the great deal of good rugby played afterwards, much of which came from the All Blacks Gareth Edwards A 13-13 draw followed in November 1974 but then New Zealand regained the upper hand with victories in 1978, 1989, 1993 and 2004. The teams last met in December 2009 when a hat-trick of tries by Springbok Brian Habana inspired the Barbarians to a 2,518 victory at Twickenham. Barbarians South African player Brian Habana surges past the challenge of New Zealand's Mike Delaney to score his third try. It is right up there with my best moments. It was a fantastic side with an unbelievably talented group of players. To beat an all-black side who haven't lost on this tour is pretty special. We understand the Barbarians' ethos and rugby is all about friendship. It has been an amazing week Barbarians' wing Brian Habana check back here on Saturday evening, following the Barbarians' and all-blacks' 2017 clash. For more exclusive pictures, 